Excuse you. Are you helping? Hmm? Yeah, you trying to help? Hi there! My sewing table's a mess, but there's a reason for that. Last night, Scamp and his brother, yes, hi Scampers, helped me sort through my cabbage patch, which was a paper bag full of offcuts and scraps and things. So I sorted out the usable scraps from the small cabbage. And so the usable scraps I've gone ahead and put into some zipper bags and squeeze the air out of those. So those store up nice. And then I've got my stack of quilting cottons. Mostly you can see I've got a lot of reds because my howdy and my pants and some other things. But what I'm gonna do is I need a new bullet journal specifically for sewing. So I'm going to make a book cloth, which is a crazy patchwork. It's not crazy quilted because it's not gonna have any batting quilted in between layers of fabric. It's just gonna be crazy patchwork. I'm gonna make a book cloth and then I'm going to make the actual book because I did learn some book binding. I'm not the best at it, <laughs> but it's serviceable and that's what I want. This one and this one were both made with back quarters. I still have some of that fabric left over as well as fabric from my Huipil, fabric from my Jimbe, fabric from my kimono padding, and a whole lot of red polka dots, cherry blossoms, and things. I do have page layouts already figured out on my computer that I need to print out on the cardstock. I'm going to do this out of, I think this is 150 GSM cardstock. I prefer cardstock over um, thinner papers, especially if I'm going to be sewing in and leaving in samples of my fabric. I am going to finish putting away all of these bedsheet scraps. Maybe Scamp will let me put the rest of it away, I doubt it. And then I'm going to start having fun patchworking. I have changed where my sewing machine is so that I can do my ironing, my cutting, my sewing, all without having to change where I'm sat. I have a large portion of the red and white fabrics and a smaller portion of these other colors. By the way, the noise in the background is my printer. I am printing out the pages for the text block. I am still debating. They don't necessarily match, but again, the whole point is to do crazy quilting, right? I've definitely got more than enough cotton to make a single book cloth. I'm just gonna kind of have fun and see where we go. piece which is definitely more wide than it needs to be and that's just so I can figure out you know do I want to cut off more of this which is probably what I'll do than that but at the same time like this whole piece doesn't really need to be there eh, I figured out so the next thing I'm gonna do is some embroidery over the edges totally unnecessary step but I want to do it so I'm gonna have some fun gonna go sit on my couch I think to do that I'm going to do the embroidery first and then I will come back and glue some interfacing iron some interfacing onto the back I want to do the embroidery first so I'm not having to sew through the glue of the interfacing <laughs> 
this was seriously a lot of fun.
cat hair. I mean, you know, it's my house. Oh, of course it's going to have cat hair all over it. The last time that I made book cloth, this stuff, I used some fusible interfacing, a very specific one. I'll put a picture up that I got a recommendation from Sea Lemon, which is who I originally learned bookbinding from. I am out of that stuff. I am going to use the iron-on interfacing that I have, and that is this Sure Taylor by Pellon. This stuff is perfectly fine for book cloth, and I've got more than enough. And this is basically to make sure that the cloth does not stretch when we are going to glue it onto the actual board, cover board. So not only that, but so I didn't do any knots at all. You probably saw, I just left tails. And I did that because the knots would just add thickness and the interfacing is gonna secure the tails. So I don't have to worry about the embroidery pulling out or anything like that. I have most of my text block printed out and ready to go. I want to add a couple more pages at the back to be an appendix where I can sew in some die swatches that I want to make sure that I keep that in mind. To do the text block, I bought a scoreboard. This is entirely not necessary. You can do this without a scoring board, but I find that it helps. Half of 11 inches is five and a half. So basically I can start off here, follow that line, plump, do it again. And that just gives me a nice clean fold. So this is the cover page, the initial, initial signature, which I actually realized how well, I wanted to do it this way because this side gets glued to the book board and then I do the rest of them. You don't want to do this like single leaf like this. In the past have done four sheets per signature. I think I actually want to do three sheets per signature. Yeah, that feels about right. And so the way that this is set up to work is that I've got one page, I'll be attaching my swatch to the lower. And then when I flip it over, I'll be attaching the swatch to the upper. And so that way I'll alternate which side the swatch is on and that'll keep the thickness kind of even. There's going to be a link in the description where you can download a version of this. Um, I'm going to make the dots a little bit darker for you and I'm going to remove the silhouette of me so you can put in your own. I'm going to go ahead and prep the rest of my signatures and then I'll be back when it's time to actually stitch them together.
Text block is now done, ready to go. So time to prep the cover. I have, this is five millimeter, I think. No, two, three millimeter chipboard. You can use other things. It's not as thick as normal cardboard. It is thicker than a cereal box. So, you know, you can find the thickness that you like. And this particular happens to be also eight and a half by 11, which is great because it means that I cut it in half. And we have our front and back covers. I do not do a spine for the books that I do. I like that to be flexible. So just finding that five and a half. Gonna mark it with a pencil. Pull out a blade. Do not try and cut through chipboard all in one go. Make several passes. You will thank yourself for it. Sorry about that, my battery totally died and I had to wait for it to charge. Look at how gorgeous that sky color is right now. Oh my goodness. Anyway, let's see if I can get this book done.
it's done. I can tell it's still got a little bit of drying left to do, but you know, it worked out pretty good. I do have some wrinkles on the inside cover page, so I might go ahead and glue another piece of cardstock, like a pretty one here on the inside, um, just to kind of mitigate that. But you can see here on this side that the silicone mat did its job and that's good. I've got the back and it, because it has no spine reinforcement, it's just the fabric. It basically does a lay flat design. So I could not be happier with this, especially that I was able to get it done. All of this hand stitching over this weekend, you know, it was a long weekend, three day weekend, and I got it all done, but I also did this. <laughs> this is gonna be the next video. So look forward to that, how I created this fantastic die. Eh, it's exciting. I don't know quite exactly the design I'm going to do with this yet. So tune in, um, subscribe, notification bell, etc. Anyway, I am going to have a lot of fun filling this book in and using it. So we'll see you later. Bye. I'm trying to sort that, sweetheart. Mm hmm. You don't look very comfortable. No? You getting cozy? Okay. <laughs> you two are so sweet. <laughs> Hi, Op. You're okay, sweetheart. Hi. You're okay. Yeah. Hi, Scruffy. This is one of our two outdoor kitties that came with the house. Yeah, hi. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. You're okay. Sometimes it's really hard to finish things when you have cats that are saying no. I am the priority.